So how do you know if a model is correct? One way to do this is use what's called a model quality assessment program. And this here describe our attempt to do that some time ago, ProQ. So the idea with ProQ was quite different from early methods because it actually was trained to predict the quality of a model and not only if it was correct or wrong or, or to identify the native structure from a set of uh, decoys. So we trained on what, what, what number of models, obtained from a method called Lightbench, and we obtained a correlation of like 0 0.76. Later methods had produced to like 0.90 uh, on between the measured quality, which is basically measure how good the model is, and the predicted quality. So the idea is basically we calculate the number of features, like atomato contacts, residue residue contacts, surface areas, secondary structure, etc., on um, for a model, and then compare that to what well, use this for an input to a machine learning method. So we had about ten thousand models. Of these, about two thousand were correct, and eight thousand was wrong, and somewhere in between. Uh, we built them all using Modeler, because that was the easy way to have the same type of atoms. But later we have been using other methods. And we predicted what, what some quality matches, and it's called max super elegant score. But they are, well, nowadays they're standard methods to use. And we test different input parameters. So we have used atom atom residual contacts. One problem, as you know, for my homology modeling, or my machine learning talks, was that you need to have a fixed window size. So to do that, we used a method developed by Colossus and Yates, 93, that we actually just take all the contents together within a window, and we calculate what fraction of these contents are a certain type. And then we have different binary atoms of contacts. For instance, we found that we only use three types of atom, atom contacts. They have a correlation of 0.43 for the elegant score. But if you increase the 30 types of atoms, we have 0.52, so it's better. On the other hand, if you use 20 types of residues, 20, uh, 20 residues, we had 0.40, but we only use six of those, which is grouped together, we had 49. And if we add the combined atom and the residues contacts together, we got a better performance of 0.28 correlation. And then we can have surface area, we had about, that was about the same quality as using the atom contacts. And then we combine it together, and we combine it with secondary, agreement with secondary structures, and agreement with surface area, etc., and we end up to 0.76. We had a few, a, few, a few other data points. So one example here is just what happens if you add secondary structures. So look at the right first. So you have a pretty good quality. You see that the quality is really very good, but it falls basically um, a good quality. So basically a straight line prediction here. So if you have a Q3, I mean, so we, we agree on the Q3 is how well does the model give you the pretty secondary structures. We know this will be about 70% correct. So any model that has much less than it could actually be a bad model. So that's, if you add this information to the neural network, you see at the left, these models are predicted to be very bad. So basically, by having this agreement, you can tune the agreement. If you add many things together, you can actually get a good performance. So you find something like that, uh, that you actually can identify, as you see the models to the right, blue and green areas that are good, and the red areas that are bad. So you can see, of course, that it corresponds very much to that it loops are badly models. We know that loops are badly modeled. But they don't agree, so that is well predicted. And of course, we compare to other methods, and clearly, ProQ was better. ProQ has, ProQ2, ProQ3 has been state of the art since 2003. All right, some of the more measures here. We can go back and read the paper. 